Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Jeff Anzalone. Thanks for being on the show, Jeff. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, uh, Whitney. Yeah, and Jeff is a full-time practicing periodontist in the great state of Louisiana. He's an author and founder of DebtFreeDoctor.com. And that's dr.com. He started his blog after paying off close to $300,000 in student loan debt and reaching millionaire status by the age of 40. He now focuses on helping other doctors and professionals create passive income from real estate so that they can stop trading their time for money. So Jeff, thank you again for your time. Give the listeners a little more about who you are and, and let's jump in. Yeah. Thank, thanks so much for having me on the show, Whitney. I, I, um, as you alluded to in the introduction, I am a periodontist. I work full time. Uh, wife, I have a wife, a beautiful wife, who also is a hygienist here at the office. And I also have two boys that are 14 and 12, which I would, you know, I, I still have their pictures on the wall that when they were like three and five here at the office. So, you know, there's daily conversation. The, the patients ask me, Oh, you know, your kids are so cute. And how old are they? And I was like, well, I like to keep them when they used to be nice and sweet, you know, how they used to like, <laughs> like dad. So that's why I keep them, keep the, uh, the three and five year old pictures up there instead of the 14 and 12. So, uh, <laughs> wow. they, um, <clears throat> they're basically, they're, they're the ones, they're the reasons why I do what I do. So, mm -hmm. uh, not only pr to provide for them, but also to teach them about, you know, the different things uh, that we're going to be talking about today, I'm sure, so that then they can teach their kids as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and you even talking about, you know, so professionals can stop trading their time for money, you know, and most people want more time so they can spend some more with their kids like you're talking about. Yeah. And, and not just that, um, there's, uh, and I'm sure this is probably true in really in any industry, but especially true in, in healthcare, there's, there's a lot of burnout, a lot of people burning out, um, suicide rates going up. I actually have a friend of mine that, um, unfortunately committed suicide a few months ago that was a dentist here. And, and, and I do believe that some of that issue had to do with finances and debt. So if, if I can just, educate people to show them, Hey, if you don't want to do this, you know, you, if you don't want to practice, there's different things that you can do out there to help speed up your retirement. So you can do something else you like, you know, that, that really helped, that really inspires me to continue to provide that information for people. So, you know, you being a, uh, you know, in, in the medical field or, or being in that type of profession and being connected to lots of these people and even creating debtfreedoctor.com. I mean, it's, it's incredible resource for people who obviously, you know, want to increase their income, their passive income. Uh, but tell me some ways that, that you're helping them do that through this platform and, and maybe some ways let's get into that, you know, they actually accomplish this goal. Yeah. Um, and it, it kind of seems like, most people such as myself, but most people that I talk to that come to the site, we're kind of all on the same path. You know, we start off ton of debt, student loan debt. And then it seems like I'm, I'm kind of getting people that have practiced a little bit, you know, 10 plus years. So most of them have kind of gotten through that debt. You know, they're established, they're making good money. The, every year they max out their 401k or IRA accounts or whatever. So they're, they're used to investing in the stock market, but now that they've gotten to the point where they've, they have some excess cash or they've paid off some stuff, they're kind of like, well, all right, well, what do I do with that money? Or, or what are, you know, I know a little bit about real estate, but not, you know, just enough to be dangerous, which that's kind of how I was when I started off. So I, I took my experience from starting off just crowd doing some crowdfunding online and talked about that. Uh, and then, and, and as I am going through, I'm just kind of putting in there what, what I think somebody should do, you know, to learn whether they're going to do that or not. You know, as you know, the, 
the lingo. It's kind of like if I dropped you into the medical field and I start having a conversation with somebody else, you're going to be like, what are you talking about? All this yeah, I'd say stop. Wait a minute. Yeah. So I was the same way. I'm like, you know, cap rate and cash on cap. I'm like, what is all this stuff? I was just, just totally foreign to me. So breaking it down, you know, talking to them about the different things, not trying to overwhelm them, uh, mainly just being a trusted resource for them because as, as somebody in, in our position, you know, we're, unfortunately we're kind of a, have a bullseye on our shirt. We're, we're targeted a lot from people trying to sell stuff and pitch us stuff. So I wanted to, to, you know, tell them, Hey, I'm not selling anything. I'm just a, I want to be a trusted resource for you. And here's the mistakes I made. And I'm, you can ask my wife, I, I still make them every day, you know, but, uh, uh, but I, I just want just to be open and honest about that with them. And that's, that's the main reason for the site. Okay. So, you know, you know, you, you had mentioned earlier, or we briefly talked about, you know, like some other benefits of, of these professionals investing in a syndication. And, uh, you know, maybe you can elaborate on, on some other things like whether it's to lower their taxes or whatever it may be. And, and you know, why you advise them to do that. Well, I had a, and I was talking to you a little bit before the, the, um, interview, I spoke with the dentist last night. He is 46 practices in Texas. He's in the process of a company buying him out and he's going to be working for another four years. So he's planning on completely retiring at 50. He's done well in the stock market index funds. He has a few duplexes that, that he manages, but you know, with him retiring at 50, he said, you know, I, I've got to, I've got to be able to, I've got, he said, I have five kids. So he said, um, you know, I have 529 plans for them, but I've got to have some money to access until I can, you know, tap into my, you know, quote, traditional retirement accounts It's 401k basically. And he was planning on using some savings, some post-tax, some Vanguard accounts. And then also he, was going to use some money from the cash flow from his duplexes, but he was intrigued about this idea about syndications and how a lot of that money could potentially be tax free. So, and, and I just told him again, I'm just saying, you know, look, I'm, I'm not an accountant, but I can just tell you from my experience, both as an investor uh, and then as somebody that knows, you know, several syndicators that, you know, the majority of, as you know, majority of the distributions that I have gotten, you know, monthly, they have been, uh, haven't been taxed on just because of the, uh, you know, the different write-offs into depreciation. So he was very intrigued about that. So, um, and again, that, that helps a lot. And there's something called the fire community, the, the financially independent retire early. So again, a, a lot of this, a lot of these people are looking for ways to lower their tax rate and being able to, to retire earlier again, without having to access their retirement accounts. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> the benefits of investing in real estate. I, I mean, it's why so many wealthy um, people have, have created their wealth through real estate and it, it's been proven time and time again. Um, but, you know, as far as yourself, how, how were you introduced to the syndication space or industry? You know, so many people just like, you know, you've talked about and, and you and I talked about it before even the show, just so many people don't even know that this is available. And, mm -hmm. and so how, how were you introduced to this space? I, I, I believe I just was just researching it uh, at one point and, and knew that I wanted to do real estate, but didn't know if I wanted to be active or passive. So I interviewed and, and talked with several people in my area that were friends and I'd actually looked at some single family homes, some fourplexes. And I said, you know what, just, I just, I just don't have time to run a practice, to deal with kids, to coach and deal with, you know, tenants. So I, you know, I kind of, you know, X that scratch that. So which led me into starting to research other avenues, which crowdfunding, which back then realty shares was the big one. A uh, patch of land was another one. So I, I started investing uh, just small little debt deals with those companies. And that's how I got started. Okay. And what about, you know, people that are coming to you now that are, 
you know, say high income earners and they're trying to figure out, you know, well, well Jeff, you know, how, how are you doing this? And, and what, uh, you know, what should I be doing? What are some of the first steps I should be doing to thinking about investing this way? Well, my, my main rule of thumb is, you know, don't, in, don't invest in anything that you don't understand. And literally five minutes before I just got on this interview, I got a text message from another periodontist who said, Hey, I just emailed you a, uh, a, like a syndicate. He was like in a fund with, you know, several syndications put together of a group. I'm not going to name the group. He said, do you know anything about them? He's like, I, I did a deal with them last year. He's like, and I don't know if he was joking or not, but he said, I don't even know. I, he's like, I, I could even tell you if this was a Ponzi scheme or not. So I emailed him back and I, and I said just what I did to him, what I just stated to you is like, you know what, you, you really should know what you, you know, you really should know what you're getting into. You should not only know about the deal, but you should also know who you're going to be investing with, you know, the, the partners, the operator. So that's my first, my first piece of advice is, you know, learn about it. Uh, just like with taxes, I know most, most people aren't going to do their own taxes, but they should at least know enough to ask educated questions. And I encourage my patients, they, they're not going to be doing the surgeries, but they, they need to be educated enough to ask questions. And that's why I've written a couple of books, uh, one on dental implants and one on some other different type of surgical procedures that we give out to our patients beforehand, educate them. So whenever they get here, they, they know, Hey, you know, number one, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. He's written a couple of books, but number two, it, it puts them a little bit more at ease that they kind of know what they're getting into. One thing that has made me successful is something that most people don't think of. It's the way that I've branded myself online. If you want to brand yourself to raise more capital, then I suggest working with my friend, Adam Adams. So go ahead, scroll down and find the link in the show notes. It's like coming out of surgery you know, thinking, thinking you were going to be missing one arm, but you're missing two, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. or, you know, or not have any teeth when you come out. Right. I mean, you know, I didn't know that was going to happen or, right. but, you know, but yeah, that's awesome. Uh, educating yourself ahead of time and any, any specific ways that you advise them to educate themselves. So they're, they understand, you know, what they're getting into. Uh, three main reasons, three main ways. And, and that's what I do. I, I read a lot, read a lot of books, read a lot of blogs, listen to great podcasts, uh, such as your podcast. And there's many others, um, with people commuting all the time or they're, or they're working out on a treadmill instead of listening to, to music. Well, Hey, you know, maybe every other day, listen to a podcast and educate yourself. And then, and then third would be reaching out to people, networking with them. There's plenty of people online that, um, that, that you could network with and, you know, just, you know, you know, continue to read and learn and, and listen to things. And that's, that's, uh, and, and the, the funny thing is once you start doing that, then, you know, somebody will introduce you to somebody else or one book will lead you to another resource. And so it, it just kind of snowballs from there. Any hard lessons you've learned Jeff from investing passively in the syndications? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I actually bit, bit the, uh, bit the bullet and, and wrote a whole article on it. If, if someone wants to, to read the whole thing, it's, it's on my uh, site. But, um, a few years ago, I lost a lot of money in, with realty shares, which as you know, has been taken over now by another group. Realty shares went under, but I, again, I didn't know what I was doing. It was my, really my first, uh, equity deal. It was, a uh, apartment complex in Tulsa. Oklahoma. And I was putting my trust in that website because that website was saying, Hey, you know what? We get all these deals pitched to us every year and we're sorting through them. And we only put the best ones on the site. So again, I, I didn't really know the people that realty shares and I did not know the sponsor and <clears throat> long story short, uh, they went in, they, they put in too much money in this complex too fast. It was a, uh, seedy area. It was a lot of crime. There was more people moving out than moving in and the whole deal folded and every investor lost their money. Mm. So that, that was a huge setback that, um, but that really it, probably if that deal did well, I, I probably would have just kept, you know, 
doing what I was doing then and not really learning about it and just putting my trust in someone else, which, I mean, you still have to do that, but not really knowing what to look for and, and that sort of thing, how to vet people. So that, um, that really pushed me to start learning myself. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. That would push you to either learn or to quit and do something else. Exactly. Right. So, you know, Jeff, what, you know, I guess some other advice you provide to passive investors now who are, or, or maybe some big fears that you see that they have that are uh, maybe not some of the common ones, but anything that you've heard recently that they're like, Jeff, I just don't feel good about, you know, investing in a syndication. Yeah. It's just, you know, like life, it's just fear of the unknown. You know, they're like, well, I'm in my forties and, and I've been investing my whole life. And how come I'm just now hearing about this now? Mm. So that, that's one of the things that that's probably one of the biggest hurdles I think people have to, to overcome is, is that, and it's, and I think the more you look, I think the longer it goes, the more popular it's going to be. But, um, it's just, that that's probably the number one thing is just getting them comfortable with it, getting them comfortable with how it works encouraging them to talk to other investors, talk to sponsors, go to, go to groups, go to meetings, really, again, educate them, educate their, themselves that, you know, this really isn't a, a Ponzi scheme. This is, you know, this is legit, <laughs> you know, Jeff, so what's been the hardest part of this syndication process or journey for you? I would, I would probably say the, the hardest part was, is what we talked about a little bit earlier was, was losing that large amount of money and really, really showing me that, Hey, you know what, you, you really didn't know as much as you thought you do. And, and that's, that's with life, you know, you, you get knocked down, but it's, it's uh, not, it's not how you get knocked down as long as you keep getting up and keep moving forward and keep learning, you know, at least learn something from it you know, and, and that, that was probably the biggest mistake or, or the biggest thing that uh, really put me behind the eight ball at first. Wow. Well, and how, how are you prepared for a potential downturn that everybody's talking about? Well, I, I, um, I don't have all my eggs in one basket. So I, I continue every year and, and I have, uh, you know, we, my wife and I, we have a plan, you know, we, every month, we have money that goes into our office retirement account. So we're, we're continuing to invest in the stock market index funds. Um, we have, you know, after that's funded, then we have other accounts for the kids, 529 plans. We have uh, some other post-tax accounts and then we have money. And then as, as it builds up to, to get into a syndication, we do that. So I try to stay spread, spread out as much as I can and not just say, Hey, let's just, you know, put all of our money here because as you know, eventually, you know, things can happen. So I think staying diversified and, um, really, really following a plan, a monthly plan is, uh, probably some of the best advice I can give, give your listeners. Yeah. A monthly plan and, and even laying it out like this, this is where we're investing first and second and third, or it sounded like you, you had an order of, of investing. It's, it's actually gotten to the point now it's weekly. Okay. It's, it's a weekly plan, but the, the good thing with a lot of that is it's automated, you know, mm. you know, certain money comes out each, each week that goes into these different accounts that, Hey, you know, I'm going to have to help my kids get a car or I'm going to have to eventually me get a car, my wife, get a vehicle, uh, going on trips. So every, every week, a little bit of money comes out and it goes, you know, in all different directions. But um, if not, you're going to look up one day and go, well, golly, I sure would like to take a nice trip, but how am I going to pay for it? Well, if, you, if you're saving and different investments along the way, you don't have to worry about it. it took, again, it took me a, a while to get to that point just, just because um, I'd never done it before. But if, if you know you're going to have some lar large expenses coming up, that's, that's one thing that I would recommend. But, but one thing that I've, it's kind of changed my mindset now that I'm investing in syndications, I, I think about it a little bit differently. You know, if I want to buy something, you know, like a, a vehicle or something that's going to cost, you know, let's say $5,000 or more, maybe like a, an ATV, a four wheeler or something like that. I kind of look at it as, okay, well I can just put that money in and, and it's gone. Or I could, 
get this much passive income from a syndication to where it's going to pay for the stuff. So uh, it's, it's a little bit different mindset shift now instead. So what's a way that you've recently improved your investing business uh, that we could apply to ours? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I, I would say I'm, I'm a little bit more involved with the, uh, the syndicator, uh, the syndicate, the syndications I invest in. So not only have I, I get to know them personally, uh, I meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, occasionally I will go and do like a property tour and really you're looking at it through their eyes, you know, and I think that's really important what they're looking for when they, you know, do a walkthrough of a property, how they're planning on improving the property. It's kind of like, you know, uh, I know you're not much of a sports fan, but, as, you know, as the, as the lay sports fan that I am, you know, I could sit there and watch college football or NFL from my, you know, chair in, in the den. And I'm, you know, looking at it, okay, this team has the ball, the offense, and this team's defense, and they're running passes or whatever. But if I were to go and watch film – with with them the next day with the coaches and they start analyzing and looking at it from a totally different perspective and that's when you're like man that is that's unbelievable uh my son that's 14 he started umpiring last year a little bit for the the you know the little league and dixie dixie league and he got first thing he said when he got home he said dad man you you're looking at it from the umpire's point of view because he had a guy helping him. He's like, man, I'm looking at it, everything from a totally different perspective, not as a player, but as an umpire. So I think looking at it from that perspective would, would help, would definitely help me. It's good advice. I like that analogy too. If you were sitting there with the coaches while they're watching it, yeah, you would hear totally different comments. You would, it would help you to see different things in that play, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so – what, what's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? I, I would say probably getting, getting out of debt is and really paying off that consumer debt, mainly the student loans. And then once, once the house was paid off, it freed up so much extra money that, you, you know, you can kind of take a deep breath and, and then really figure out what, you know, and, once you get to that point, then you have a lot of money every month that you could do stuff with, you know, whether you want to invest or save or give or, or whatever. So that, that probably was one of the big contributing points. And how do you like to give back? We, um, we do three things. One with our time and our community, you know, we're involved with our church, uh, not only with the giving our time, but also uh, giving money with it to the church. And then um, we can do it very easily with the patients, you know, people that come in that, that truly won't work. They're working hard, but they just can't, they just can't afford it. So, you know, we'll, we'll give away free dentistry. So that's, that's really rewarding um, as well. Wow. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for sharing that and giving back in that way and, and your time today uh, with us. Uh, tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Sure. They could go uh, two ways. Either go to the website, it's uh, debtfreedr.com, or if they want to get in touch with, with me directly, they can email me, Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at debtfreedr. Com. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.